Hey guys, it's Bug. Welcome back to another video. Today I am coming to you to create a project with this fabulous new stamp set from May May Made It called Birthday Tag It. It is um, one in a line of four or five or maybe six uh, tag sets, stamp sets that, uh, that she has. And today we are going to be making some tag shakers. Now, I love a shaker and I love a tag. So this was really fun to create and it is a lot less um, work than it looks like. So let's get started. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is stamp your tags. I have some already stamped and I decided to use this teal and purple paper today. And let's see here. I have a number of different um, colors that I stamped on and a couple different colors that I stamped with when I made these. Um, this is a lightish blue color. It looks a little green, of course, on uh, the yellow but I really like the way it kind of contrasts, so that's cool. And for these, what I did is I took this scalloped tag and cut the scallops off of it. I really like it, I think it's cute, but for this purpose, I really wanted something that would line up well. So all I did was I cut through the black line and cut off the scallops and just enough so you wouldn't see the scallop anymore. And for me, it just uh, is gonna make this project a little easier to line up. I am not going to be fussy cutting scallops and uh, so that's, this is how I uh, took care of that. And you don't have to have your tag line be right against the edge of your paper. Obviously a tag that is stamped can have a, a colored border around it and still be fabulous. This is just what I wanted to do for this particular project. So I have the purple, or the purple, the purple with the yellow and the yellow with the teal. And now I'm going to do the teal with the purple, but I think I'm going to do the teal on top. That seems right, right? So for this, all I did was use my straight edge and my craft knife and cut out this rectangle. However, you can definitely do it old school where you make a little slice in the middle and cut through with your scissor. That would work just as well. And I happen to have this um, We Are Memory Keepers little set. It's got this self-healing mat and it's magnetic, so this ruler is a magnet, and I won't use it without holding it down, because that would not be safe, and you know safety first, but it does kind of help it stay in one place, and you're not gonna like put so much pressure down that you fling your ruler across the table or anything like that. So when I do these, uh, these kind of cuts, I like to make a little slice in the corners freehand. And I guess you don't have to do this part freehand, but it just makes sense to me. And what this is doing is creating a stopping point 
so that when we're using our ruler and not really able to see well, a lot of times you'll feel the paper give once you get to this little notch and you know to stop cutting. So I am going to just line this up and you want to do a couple passes don't have to get all the way through all at once. Just want to slowly cut through the paper. And that time I really did feel that it stopped at that little notch. So that's great. I'm just going to keep turning it around and cutting out our tag. All right, so we have our top and our bottom now that are ready to go. Okay, so we have our top and our bottom and we set this aside for later. I'm gonna go ahead and glue my sentiment, or glue it, stamp it. Just gonna eyeball the upper middle. I didn't want it in the um, too far down because this shaker element is going to be filling up some of the bottom part. So there's that. I will clean that up. So now that we have our two pieces, there are a couple things we want to do. First, we're going to need some acetate. And so you can use um, packaging plastic. I happen to pick up a set of these plastic sheets or acetate sheets from scrapbook.com. Um, I honestly, it was probably more than $5 and less than $10 for this, but it's very clean and um, lasts a long time if you're making little shakers so so the reason that we have this guy set aside is because i'm just going to hold him here and make sure that the piece of acetate that i cut i don't know if you can even see that is wider than this little cut apart section trying to also not make more static. I think that'll do it. I guess it kind of helps too to have this uh, attached to the acetate sheet <laughs> with a little bit of its own static because I just found one this morning uh, next to my chair in the other room because I dropped it on the floor and didn't find it. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this down. Um, you might wanna just double check it one more time. Make sure that it covers the entire window, but it's not also going to uh, go past your um, paper. And what I did for this part is I made a fine line of glue all the way around the rectangle 
but what I did is I did it, um, I did it away from the window. So I put it at about maybe an eighth of an inch away from, and I'm just eyeballing, of course, um, away from the window, because you know when you press down the acetate, it's gonna go probably all directions. And so I wanted there to be a decent um, amount of space for the glue to spread out without um, being visible from the front. So I'm gonna try to do that again. See how it goes. That is a lot of glue too. That bead of glue is pretty big for this, but I think it'll do. This is like the slowest I glue anything ever. There we go. Just gonna take my acetate sheet. This way. Now you see what I'm talking about. That glue is not going to show up on the acetate from that side. We give it enough room so that it would spread. Just lay that flat, and while we wait for this to dry, Actually, let me flip it over so the weight can make it flat. While we're waiting for this to dry, we are going to prep our little guy. Now, this is where you can use your, um, your powder bag or powder tool, your anti-static tool. I didn't happen to do that for these, um, and I think that they're all right. So let me grab this our template aside. So for this, I went ahead and just took my time to cover it. So I guess this is a little fussy, but it really, um, the result is well worth it. So I am going to need two pieces that are this size. So I'm going to take off two of these. These are those uh, foam strips that I get from scrapbook.com. A lot of different places make these now though, I think. And I still have the backing on this side. So I'm just going to line it up here and see how much I, I need and cut away the rest and start building my shaker barrier. So I'm just going to line it up on the outside. So I want the black line to still show. So you have the black line and then the foam right next to it. And then these two are gonna be the same size. So this is that same piece that has the backing still on it on the one side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line this up and cut it away as well. Tricky part about this one is that it has to be, uh, it has to create the full barrier. So you don't want it to be too short. I'm just gonna set these guys aside for just a moment. Let's see how this goes, <laughs> excuse me. The juniper's in full bloom here, so the allergies are bothering me just a little bit. So just line that up. Just make sure you got a full, complete barrier there. Do the same thing on this side. See, that was a tiny bit short. Try that again. Let's 
So for this, uh, a lot of times I use the Scotch foam tape because it's a large roll and it's continuous and you just cut off the pieces that you need. But for this, I just needed small strips that were, um, that were straight and uh, went with this product for that reason. So let's see here. So I'm going to do the same thing here. That black line is going to show just at the end. Um, and really, that's not really a um, like part of the engineering of this card. It really is simply that when you look at the card, if anything is showing, you just want to see that black line. Of course, you can see the foam. I don't have black foam. That might have been fun, or even that clear foam would have been interesting. I've never used that before. If you've ever used the clear foam, um, put a comment below and let me know how you like it. Does it, it uh, stick as well as regular foam? Would you buy it for regular crafting or just for special projects? I'll lay this one right here. And now I'm just uh, working around the top of it. And this is just so it's all the same height. Oh, haha, <laughs> you know what I forgot? I forgot to punch the holes with my other one back here. I'm just gonna lay them together. And whatever hole punch you have, it doesn't have to be a big hole punch. It can be the small one. Um, if you don't want to hang anything from it, you don't need to do this part. Um, but it's nice if it's finished with ribbon or twine and I'm using some um, jump rings and little baubles today. So let's see. Oh, my feeling's coming out. to fill my shaker and adhere the top um, just looking at this stamp it is pretty dark on a dark color but I think it shows up better um, in real life than on the screen and I'm not too worried about it uh, being kind of blended away by the purple so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this guy today I'm using these these recollections recollections metallic glitter but they almost look like um, tiny sequins and there's a number of different colors um, let's see I am gonna use a couple colors that I didn't use yesterday I do want a little bit of silver because my jump rings are gonna be silver so I'm put some of this in here And maybe some of this rose gold. No. How about some copper? Just making a mess. So now that this is done, I'm going to lay something heavy on this end while I go ahead and take the plaster or the adhesive backing or the backing off of the adhesive foam. And it just kind of helps keep things from going too crazy. Well, we're getting everything lined up here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to line these up. 
I've only got these one, two, three internal sides un, undone. Oh, you can see the static is already picking up some of those. Just kind of lay it in here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take the rest of this adhesive off and hopefully the shakers don't go too much all over the place. Just make sure you get a good seal here before you pull off the rest of the, the backing paper. A lot of people. All right. So before the next step, which is just adding um, a couple little decorations here, I. I'm just going to check things out, see if it is all lining up the way I want it to. There is one little piece of the back that is poking out right here that I can see when I'm looking at it from the front. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut that away. And right here. Yep, yep. So, you see on these two, I put a jump ring and a tassel and a jump ring and whatever these little things are, they don't know what they are, but they're like a glass bead. They're filled with some sprinkles. These look like uh, iridescent star glitter or something like that. And if you don't have some pieces like this, you can definitely use twine or ribbon or yarn or even, um, you know, not punch the hole and not put anything there. So I am using these little jump rings that I got. I'm not really, I don't really make jewelry, so I didn't have any jump rings, but decided I wanted to get some um, that were small. In the past, I had some old earring wires, the hoop kind, that kind of just uh, loop in together and used those, but I decided I would get these instead. So, just gonna pull that this way, and I'm gonna put this one through. Do, do it like this. I don't really know what I'm doing. And because I made the hole so large here in my tag, I'm just going to go ahead and put two of these. I could probably put three there. It still look... look uh, Look pretty good. This one's in my way. There we go. Okay.
So there we go. Don't forget, you can pick up this stamp set on the MayMayMadeIt.com store. I will link it down below in case you just want to check it out. If you enjoyed any part of this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment. Tell me what you liked about it. And don't forget that I have a monthly non-sponsored video. Vid <laughs> don't forget that I have a monthly non-sponsored giveaway. So. If you comment in any of my May videos within the month of May, you'll be entered into a random drawing giveaway for craft stuff. Thanks again for joining me for another video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget, safety first.